All right? But that was the biggest problems we were having and experiencing in our community. And for us it was, how can we start changing this thing around? These are our problems. How can we start looking at those problems as opportunities? And we started basically teaching them, introducing them to, you know, to the internet. Telling them about blogging. Now remember they've got no formal education. Many of them have not completed school. Well, they've been to school recently, but that was probably to go and rob the school or something, right? It wasn't really to go and learn, as we know it. And, and for many of them, it was really showing them how they can use this technology to share stories. That was all it was about. There was no, nothing about development, nothing about coding. It was purely creating an environment for them to be empowered to see the potential that there is. So, that was what we had, our first, that was the only equipment we had, it was a donation. I don't know if you, some of you will know what this is. It's a 386. <laughs> some of you might not know what it is. And it used to run on a dial-up, uh, I don't know if you still have dial-up here. A dial-up connection. Basically, we you use your telephone line to, to run onto the internet. But now, if you imagine trying to run a YouTube video using a telephone line, it's just crazy. And the organization that, that allowed us to work in the room, we used to work in a storage room. It's called Impact Direct, right? They gave us a little storage room, and we would use that storage room occasionally. So whenever we use the internet by then, then all the telephone lines are off. Because you can only, there's only one line, and we want to use the internet. So we be show, so you can just imagine having these guys with all these tattoos and the bullet marks and the knife wounds, standing around a PC, wanting to show them a YouTube clip. And you just see this at all, we're turning. <laughs> Nothing happening. And they didn't have a lot of patience, of course, you know, so. But this is how we started. We started using what we actually had at hand. So we didn't have huge investments or anything. That is another important thing for us. We also realized that, and this is crucial, that empowerment is crazy when you create, when you start creating value, right? When you start creating value and learning, that is what empowerment is all about. So when we start equipping these guys and girls around how they can learn these skills and how, can, how they can share stories, something happened for them, something that we didn't expect, right? So we obviously then managed to get some equipment. We painted our room red. I'm not going to tell you that story. I'll tell you the story later. Uh, it was accidental that the color was red. It was, we were trying to match the laptops that we got. Um, and so I think this is a very rare room. But that was how we started, right? Um, this guy over here was the guy that used to run all, uh, the biggest prostitution ring. When he came into our program, the police came to thank us, saying that 50% of all crime is stopped in the community. <laughs> we got a, we, he gave a, a big ceremony to thank us, uh, but we did nothing. He just said, felt, saw the opportunity of sharing his story, right? We then had a big problem. The problem was that some of the women in the community came and they said, hey, and these are our mothers, they said, but we also have stories to share. What about our stories? So then what happened, the same young men and women that used to disempower these mothers in the community, they needed to ask them to start teaching the mothers how to use this digital media. Okay, so they then started becoming trainers. So, and, and it wasn't, it was only, we only did it four hours a month that we were working with these groups. So then the mothers started coming and they started blogging and Facebooking and tweeting and they what four square any technology that you can think of, they are doing it. Right? If you think about Google Plus, they done Google Plus before I was on Google Plus. Right? I had to ask them to see the invite when it was still a close group. They just love all these things. But we got people excited about learning about technology and seeing the power of these tools in how it can actually make an impact on their lives. Then the teenagers came and they said, oh, but what about our stories? We've got families that are struggling. So we then used the same group to start teaching the younger generation. The kids were taught by them as well. Right? And we then started completely going out into the community, teaching them how they can use these kind of technologies to share stories of hope. We also then had the elderly, I think, the oldest person in our training program is 94 years old. Okay, she's a granny of 94 years old. I remember when we introduced her to Google. 
Imagine having a hundred plus senior citizens in a room, and now you tell them there's something called Google, right? Where you can Google a recipe. And when we show them how they can see a recipe of one of the cakes, it was a huge applause. But then one of the grannies got up and she said, wait, 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 this, she was like in the 80s, 85 or 86 years old, I think. And she got up, she says, Marlon, that recipe is wrong. <laughs> you know? And now I'm like, okay, um, I'm asking her, like, what, what is wrong with this? She said, no, the internet is wrong. Now, the one thing that I've learned is you never, ever argue with an 85 year old grandma. <laughs> never, 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 never. If she tells you the internet is wrong, then the internet is wrong. So I told her, no, the internet is wrong. So we introduced her to blogging. So she could actually go and comment on people's blogs. So we had to tell her she must have told her they're wrong. Maybe she must try and be a little bit more, you know. So she comments quite a lot. Um, she also is on Facebook and she doesn't sleep. So later in night she will be commenting on every single thing. So if you don't come and say hello to her, she will write on your wall. Like, where are you? You know, so. But, but these are the kind of things that we saw. People began understanding the opportunity with these technologies. These are some of our moms doing mobile journalism. They started using their mobile phones to take video clips, share stories, and then we taught them how they can upload it to YouTube. Right? And that meant that this whole environment that was created from young children right up to senior citizens was becoming, a, a created a different kind of tech community, if I can call it that. So what we did, we then created this kind of environment for people to grow. All of a sudden, when people saw the opportunity around the power of technology, the mobile phones, at the same time, people had ideas. They came up with, hey, if only we can use this technology to do this. If we can have technology to do our washing, for example, or to do the dishes, you know, to clean our house. Not that we have that kind of applications here. If any of you develop that app, I can guarantee you that it will do very well on the app stores. Okay, so the minute you have an app that you create that can clean your house, please let me know. I think it might be a good app. Right? But people were coming up with ideas about how they can use technology in education, how they can use it to solve health problems, you know, how they can use it to solve or to address unemployment problems. And what we realized was that the people in the community who best understand the problems than the people who experience the problems on a day-to-day -day basis. And that was then when something else happened to us. Right? We then found that we had the most unlikely innovators. I mean, some of the innovators became, like I said, people that were used to be housewives, that got no formal education, came up with amazing ideas. All we did was we basically then created an environment where those ideas can become reality. Brought in developer, developers, we then started working with companies so that we can have launch platforms of these technologies. And, and that was something that completely caught us off guard. Uh, and, and we realize that it always starts with a simple idea. Never think, everything always starts with a simple idea. Don't try and overcomplicate things, because if you're going to try and overcomplicate things, then you're never going to get anything done. If you're busy with an application or product for more than two years and you haven't launched it to a client yet, rather stop what you're doing. You're actually wasting your time. If you can't take something to market within the space, in our climate, within the space of six months, then rather don't do it, right? Um, Africa, unfortunately, has something that I call pilot syndrome. We love pilots. Everything is a pilot. We pilot here, and then we pilot there. You know, six months later, we pilot over there. You know, it's, we love pilots, you know? And, and we need to get out of it. I think it's basically, if you have a simple idea, do it good enough to take it as quickly to the market as possible. If it doesn't work, good. If it works, yeah, you know, now go and grow that idea. And that is something that we realized. So I'll give you some examples. This guy over here, his name is Terence, right? Terence, when I met up with Terence, I asked Terence, Terence, what is the biggest problem we have in our community? Terence said, Marlon, the biggest problem we have in our community is unemployment. Of 
course, 70% unemployment is fairly high. If you're a young person, it's even higher, it's over 80%. Right? So, tenants have been unemployed for five years. He told me he's been unemployed for five years, which is long. Especially if you someone that is at an age where you want to have a family. When tenants told me he's been unemployed for five years, I was so excited. I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I was like happy. I'm like, that's amazing. You're unemployed for five years. That's like the best thing I've heard all day, you know? And he looked at me like, am I crazy? <laughs> Since when being un is unemployed for five years a good thing? It's crazy. But I told him, tenants, you've been unemployed for five years, right? He says, yes. And I asked him, what's the biggest problem in our community? He says, unemployment. Uh, exactly. You are, you should become a consultant for unemployment. You know, he's got all the experience of what it is to be unemployed. So who best can come up with a solution than parents? And just then, Terry started developing an idea and he actually launched a mobile social network called Uzi, which is actually a Finnish word, which means new, and it's basically a poor man's LinkedIn, for those of you that use LinkedIn. It means that people can basically match them with job opportunities via the mobile phone. Launched it about 10 days ago, just over a week ago. Within the first week, he had over 100,000 users searching for jobs. One week, 100,000 users. Now he's a technology entrepreneur. No, never completed school. He also co authored a, a, a paper, an academic paper, about using mobile phones to address unemployment in Cape Town. He's also now an accomplished author. But this was a guy who was unemployed for a very long time. Just give you another example. This girl over here, three years ago when she came in, she basically was homeless. Well, at least not homeless, she was roaming the streets. Suicidal drug addict. That was over three years ago. When you give your phone to someone roaming the streets as a drug addict and that's suicidal, will you give yourself phone to no, she's the type of person that you would normally hide your phone from, am I right? Who wouldn't want, she might just grab it to go get more drugs. Today, she runs a blog called She's the Geek. Um, and it's basically one of the best science and technology blogs in South Africa. She writes reviews for Nokia, for all the, for Samsung, for all the big brands. And they basically, she's on the VIP list for most of them. And she writes, technology reviews from a woman's perspective and basically use technology to empower women right so today everybody wants to give up gadgets any gadget that they can think of she gets a car motor like audi and you know phone the telecom she review a car so she must she can't even drive <laughs> tom tom sends her any new tom tom that's a little g what's it yes gps, GPS thing, thing systems they see her that, so what she does, she gets the mothers in the community to walk around with her. <laughs> turn right. There go. Turn there. They don't have cars, you know, but, but this is basically completely turned around because she saw the power of technology and she saw a need in the community. Right? Um, so really it's all about being community driven. Another product, and I'm just going to quickly wrap up with this, is remember I told you what were the big problems in our community? was the problem of unemployment, drugs, gangs, things like that. That was it. About three years ago, we then heard a, a report by government that said that if anybody wants to go for any counseling for drug rehabilitation, there's a six to 12 month waiting period. Now, I can guarantee you, if someone is a drug addict and they want help, and you tell them you have to wait six to 12 months before you can get any help, that's a very, very long time to wait. I don't think that person will survive, to be honest. And then, within that same community, people that came up, we came up with ideas. How about if we could actually use the technology 